Good morning, Singapore, and welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is the one, the only, we love her so much, Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. Good morning. Good morning. Am I, am morning, I too Dr. soft? Jerry. Or am I too loud for you, uh, Jerry? No, it doesn't. It doesn't go to my mic, so I'm not sure whether you all can hear me. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. How are you How this are you morning, today, Jerry? Dr. Jerry? I am okay. It is uh, quite a, a week, and I think with the Om- Omicron, Omicron, yes. the Omicron. New variant. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And when it came out, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> not again. Um, yeah. Going, yeah, it's not again. I... Not another but one. But we're not here to talk about that today. No, we are here <laughs> no, to talk about not. autistic spectrum disorder. Yes, and I know we spoke about it before, but I think there's still so much misunderstanding or misconceptions about it. Mm. I thought I wanted to revisit this disorder again. Which okay. is good because I've forgotten exactly, I mean, what, what we spoke about in the past. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember it at all. So, you know, what, what is autistic spectrum disorder? Because when we talk about autism, I just think about Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman. Right. You know, uh, mm-hmm. that, that to me is autism. Um, mm-hmm. Are there different types of autism? There's definitely the, the whole spectrum, right? From um, mild to severe and it is that complexity of this developmental disorder that makes it so confusing for everybody. Because, you know, when when we look at somebody that is mild or when parents go, um, they come in and they say, but I didn't think it was autism and we diagnosed with autism, right? Mm. And then they they tear up and go, oh, I I didn't realize Mm. or I I didn't expect. Mm. Mm, mm. Mm. So when you say mild, Dr. Jerry, how mild is mild? Like what are the signs and symptoms of someone who has mild uh, autism? Okay, let's look at the the three different areas that it usually uh, affects, right? So the Mm, social mm. skills that uh, it would usually affect, um, the communication, okay, and also uh, behavioral symptoms that we see. Mm. So those that we see or uh, in the shows, um, they are very repetitive, they're very rigid, they're very restrictive mm. uh, sort of behaviors, okay? Mm. Uh, they would have um, self-soothing sort of behavior. So those are th- uh, more commonly seen by people because the behaviors are more overt. Mm. So they might, you know, hit their head or they might do the hand flapping, which is a very right. classic symptom. Yes. Um, they might repeatedly do certain symptoms and we look at them and we go, okay, we, we've seen the, the uh, frequency, we've seen you know, the behaviors, the number of times they are, they are doing. Um, and you, know, you kind of suspect that they are on the spectrum. Mm, yeah. And then you interact with them, and some of them have echolalia. So uh, you might say something, even the word hi, and they repeat the word hi. And then mm. you say, hi, what's your name? They repeat, hi, what's your name? Mm. So that's, you know, uh, the communication is a little bit affected or flawed. Mm. Mm. But what about okay. uh, you yeah. know some 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 kids, right? I mean, I'm talking about kids here because I think it's easier to identify a, a, an adult with uh, autism. Uh, but for kids, right, could they be borderline uh, uh, naughty and actually be autistic? You know, because you mentioned early mm. on that some some uh, some people with autism, like for example, kids, right? And I was talking about Rain Man. I mean, that's mm. an adult, mm. but a yep. kid, you know, who 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 beats himself or knocks knocks his knocks head his or head. something like that, right? What if a kid goes around and 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 hits other people? Is there a possibility ah. that that uh, you know he's running around just hitting everybody? Is there a possibility that the parents are unaware and just? and just assumes that their kid is just being playful and, and naughty when in fact the kid might be autistic? Um, 
So with you're talking about without a diagnosis and the yes. kid is doing that, mm, it is yeah. a possibility if let's say they're very mild and they hit to get attention, they hit mm. to um to to self soothe perhaps. Right. Yeah, it is possible. Mm. Mm. Without even for those that have been diagnosed, many of them do still uh, use inappropriate ways of trying to get attention from another person. Right. Okay. okay. I just okay. want to deal with okay. this attention a little bit more uh, when we come back. All right. In the meantime, here's George Michael with Too Funky on the Big Show, One FM, ninety one point three. Now, Jerry, I think my 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 language may be a little off, but. Are autistic people naturally attention seekers? Uh, <laughs> what a way to put it. I've I know, never thought you, about it that way, you know. Yeah, but, you know what I mean? Um, they, they don't. They prim- Many, many of them would rather be left alone. So, you know, um, for the word autism, the translation in Chinese is zi bi zhen. That means I want to lock myself within myself. It's different from lockdown syndrome, but they they just want oh, to wow. be by themselves. Mm. Yeah, they yeah. don't enjoy yeah. Yeah. they don't enjoy a, a social setting, Company. so to speak. They mm. just mm. want to be they, by themselves. Is is this yeah. why is this why so many? Well, I, I, okay, I can't say so many. It's just the, the 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 two or three that I know seem to be very because they're locked in themselves their way of expressing is very creative they're very artistic Mm. (laughs) so there are so many different personalities right um and and that's why they are so lovely to to learn from yes they can try and get to know our world in a very creative manner but actually their understanding of the world is different from our understanding of the world how yeah so for example i think i did mention it because we did cover autism before i'm not sure whether i mentioned about this uh autistic team that i had before and how Mm. he managed the oral examination so before the oral examination he was a bundle of nerves and uh, it was the o level examination and his IQ is 150 plus, mm. which is superior IQ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and yet he is a bundle of nerves. So after the whole examination, I sat down with him and said, so how did you do? And he went, mm. Auntie Jerry, I conquered it. <laughs> I was I like, what? I it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was I like, what did you do? So... Um, you know, he, he, he said, I went in, there were two, uh, uh, examiners there. You know, the first thing I did was to smile because in a social setting, you smile. Okay. (laughs) That is true. How many of our students go in there with like, you know, um, whitewashed faces. Long faces. Yeah. Yeah. Faces. Right. And he, he said. Then I sat down, uh, no, I sat down and I smiled at them. Then I remembered, I need to look at them straight in the eye. Remember, these children uh, have a lot of difficulty having eye contact. So Mm. he forced himself to do it. And then Mm. he said, you know, we were talking about the topic, but I remembered that in a social environment, I need to make them laugh. So I told a joke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. I mean, then I, I went, oh my God, wait, wait, wait. Was the joke relevant to the topic? He said, of course it's relevant. Okay. <laughs> he was like, why are you asking stupid questions, right? <laughs> um, yeah, but he said the, the essential thing in a conversation is to make sure the other person feels comfortable. And his way of making the other person feel comfortable is to make them laugh. Then he said, I think I did very well. And he did. So So he said he conquered it. He He conquered it. He conquered. He 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 conquered conquered the the examination because it was a, a real challenge for him. But this is how the brain works. They break things down. They process things and they deal with it. 
Right. He well, killed it. He killed it. He killed it. He killed it. He, killed he, killed it. Conquered. he saw he conquered. So just a question, uh, Dr. Jerry. So there is, there are ways for those living with autism to train themselves to be able to act in certain social uh, environments. Mm. And, and, and as you said, their brain works very differently. Like also with Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman. I mean, he, he had a photographic memory. Do all autistic... Uh, uh, individuals have um, photographic memories or do they specialize inside of different areas? No, so it is a myth that, uh, you know, they would be so good in one particular area. They can have oh, an okay. uneven skill set, mm. right? But okay. it doesn't mean okay. that mm. they are gifted in piano, gifted in drawing, gifted mm. in, you know, ha all having photographic memory. Some of them can mm. have very average abilities but it's not but, about having okay. a huge skill set yeah but they can be trained like the like this one person that you were talking about to to manage certain situations they they can so um okay. for, for many of them they uh if they are mild to moderate we can look at the behavior and help them understand the chaos of our world. Now, the reason why they have all the repetitive behavior and self-soothing behavior is because they're trying to calm themselves mm -hmm. in our world, which is super chaotic for them. Hectic, you know, yeah. It's very dynamic. It's too dynamic. Yeah. I got asked by, uh, you know, the little kids, how come this person is smiling when, when they say that they are angry? And how am I supposed mm. to answer the question, right? <laughs> it's because a way of coping, them. right? Yeah. It's their way of so, coping. Mm. Mm, so they, they, they need to learn the chaos of our world and we help them to understand so we don't really train we train the behaviors but we help them to understand the different situations the different scenarios and it takes a lot of teamwork and patience from the parents right mm -hmm. what about parents uh, jerry who are in denial mm. i'm sure there are many parents who are in denial they suspect that there is something wrong with their child but um yes. you know they you know they just hope and pray it will go away at some point uh, how much mm. how much harm are they doing to their kid in the long run I mean, there are different kinds of parents that are in denial, those that don't come forward at all, you know, don't receive help at all. For those that do come forward, it gives the uh, psychologist and the team, that means the different therapists, an opportunity to work with the child with or without a diagnosis. Jerry, mm. these parents in denial, uh, mm. The longer they stay in denial, does the autism become worse? Uh, yes, because the child will start learning more behaviors to comfort themselves. They don't know because they're not taught what to do. So if they don't, they're not taught, they cannot learn. If they don't learn, they cannot showcase what they have learned, right? Mm. So it so can go from... So it can go from mild to severe if the parent is in denial. Um, if they have, okay, it won't go so bad, mm. you know, they are odd and exceptional cases, but uh, yes, the condition can deteriorate. Wow. Mm. Mm. Okay, yeah. so so just, just coming off the back of what FD just asked, so autism is a neurodevelopmental uh, syndrome, if I... If a disorder um is yes. there a way to cure or improve it i mean is, is there is there an end to this researchers have tried to look for different ways you know mm -hmm. um from genetic recoding to deep mm -hmm. brain cell stimulation to um, uh, stem cell uh, right. yeah, replacement, so many different ones. But um, in so far, it is still all in the research. I mean, it's mm -hmm. they are still continuing to do the research. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And is there a reason, yeah. uh, 
is I mean, is there a way? To, like, I don't. What causes it? I, I don't want to sound like I'm using the wrong <laughs> yes, language, no you know, cause. for fear of like. No. There's no cause. Okay. Okay. There's, there's no, no particular cause. cause for it, it is okay. so complex from one. Yeah. Um, one one child to another child, from one individual to another individual, there, it in by itself, it is mm. very very complex. Yeah. So that's mm. why it's been so difficult to come up with one like magic pill for all of them. Oh, there is no pill, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay. It, it, but, yeah. but, but, no, but there is no medicine for it. Also, right. But they but, do I mean, take something to calm themselves, right? Do they t do they um, take uh, any any medication? No. no. Okay. So if they right. have like very compulsive behaviors, they might take medication, or the doctor might give some medication to um, decrease the compulsions and the obsessions. Okay. okay. Mm. Good question, right. Angel. Ask uh, Jerry that question again. We're going on uh, on air. Good morning, Singapore, and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is from The Therapy Room. She is uh, one of the uh, top 10 psychologists here in Singapore. Uh, she is number one in our books. Dr. Geraldine Tan. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Glenn. What a confidence booster. I know. <laughs> right? You are the best. You are the best, Jerry. We all you are. You are. So, Dr. Jerry, today we're talking about autistic spectrum disorder. And earlier on uh, the Big Show TV, um, we were talking about how autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder. Uh, there, uh, there is no cause for it and there's no known cure for it. Um, but do people living with autism have any medication to take? Is there, is there, is there a magic pill that they take to sort of calm their minds down or, or anything of the sorts? There's no one magic pill. So if anyone is trying to look for a magic pill, there isn't one. Mm. But we do know that they present with different behavioral um, you know, issues and concerns. So for those, there might be medication that help. What do I mean? Uh, if they do have compulsions, obsessions, and it is uh, very, very severe, the doctor might give them medication to decrease their uh, compulsions to keep them safe. Mm, but it doesn't okay. mean that it is the uh, medication for autism. Mm, you know, I think it's okay, a good okay. thing that we're talking about this today because, um, you know, we, we, we want... Um, Singaporeans to understand this condition because many a time, you know, when we go out sometimes, uh, uh, you know, to shopping malls or restaurants and all that, we always come across, you know, children who are misbehaving. Naughty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And we just assume that they're naughty. Mm. Spoiled. Mm. Right? Yeah. But mm. in actuality, mm. there is there is more to it. That meets the eye. Mm. And I've right. seen on more than right. one occasion strangers, you know, getting offended by kids and mm -hmm. either yeah. reprimanding them or even sometimes physically hitting them. Yeah. You know, so bringing up a topic oh. like this, I think, is very, is very <laughs> important. Yeah. You know, because for anyone who comes across a kid who is extremely naughty, you know, you, you might want to think twice before scolding the kid or, or holding on to the kid or, or touching the kid because mm. this kid might be autistic. Yeah. Right, yeah. Jerry? Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. Um, it is possible. It is possible. And I, I kind of like laughed at don't touch him, which is true. I mean, first of all, we don't go touching everybody's children. Yeah. yeah. But um, aut autistic children are, are very sensorial, which means that very, some of them can be extremely sensitive to all the different senses, including touch. So many of them do not like to be hugged and do not like to be touched. So if you do touch them and it happens that this autistic child is very sens uh, tactically sensitive, they might just whack you and you mm. really don't want that. Right. Mm. What if the kid comes up okay. to, the, to, to someone and, and, and whacks that person, which is what I'm talking about, oh, you see. Yeah, you know I've what seen I mean? it happen. So, so right. you know, I think one has to, to just think right why did this kid just do that to me right for no for mm. no rhyme or reason because mm. it's mm. it's it's yeah. very likely that the person will might just react by pushing the kid away or mm. you know 
kicking mm. the kid. It's possible, mm. right? Mm. 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 I'm not saying to to um, tolerate or to take on all these beatings, but you know we do stop the behavior. I think by the time the parent will already be there to stop the behavior, mm. but we also need to understand what is going on with this child. You know, Absolutely. rather than to berate the child or worse berate the parent that oh you don't know how to teach your child yeah. which is very very hurtful for the parent mm. when yeah. they are already yeah. trying their utmost to deal with everything else when we come back mm. i've got two questions for jerry one regarding uh, a family issue and the other regarding parents. Uh, this will be on the Big Show TV, TV. folks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, meantime, here's Charlie Puth with attention on the Big Show, 1FM 91.3. So, Jerry, first of all, the family issue. If a family has, if this is a neurological condition, I'm right. I'm right by saying that? Okay. So, yes. a family has three children, two of them have autism. Is genetics involved? Yes, uh, so a very, very good question because um, there is a genetic predisposition there. So uh, there are parents that uh, worry, will my next child have it? But it doesn't mean that you will have it or the next child will have it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. The, uh, the other question that's come up on our Facebook pages is, is, is this. Um, we send children for therapy when they have autism should the yep. parents be involved in those therapy sessions of course well? because they are the ones that journey with the child so whilst the psychologist the um, speech therapist the occupational therapist educational therapist all work with the ch uh, child uh, the parent needs to know what is going on in therapy mm. and what we are trying to achieve mm. yeah because the parents are amazing the parents that i've worked with have been nothing but amazing because the amount of patience they have i think i you know none none of us can measure up to it mm. yeah we've got some amazing um, sorry sorry go ahead go ahead angel Okay, yeah, Dr. Jerry, I just want to ask a question. Forgive me if I sound ignorant, but uh, we've been speaking about a lot about dementia because we're working with Dementia Singapore and uh, we've been doing some filming, meeting some people living with dementia and stuff like that. And when you refer to people who have dementia, you don't refer to them as dementia patients. You refer to them as people living with dementia. This is, is this the same for people with autism? Because I want, I want people to know or have create more awareness around it. So how do we refer to them? Is it also person living with autism? They're not necessarily a patient or a victim, right? No, so they're not patient, they're not victim. It's a super, super lovely question that you ask because many of the teens with autism, they just say, I'm a person with autism. I happen to have autism. Right, so why don't they just say, I am autistic? Yeah. Is, yeah, that, is yeah, that acceptable? Same, same thing. Well, if they say that they, 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 they have autism, I mean, they would generally say that I have autism. I am autistic. Mm. And they are very mm. comfortable to, to tell us. By the time they can say that, they're very comfortable to tell people that. Yeah. So see, in you see speech, the difference. when we're speaking about it, it's okay to say that person is autistic or that person's living with autism, right? That's, that's, that's the proper it, sort of phrasing yeah. to use. But yeah. that's interesting yeah. that you should bring that up and compare it to uh, a person living with dementia. Yeah. Because, see, uh, I, I, I will say that I'm autistic, but I don't want to say that I'm demented. Demented. Well, you know you're what not I mean? demented. When you have dementia, you're but you not live demented. Live well, it comes dementia. from the you same have, word. You have dementia. But we don't have a word oh, for your... them, right? You're yeah. living, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Living with dementia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. right. Mm. But, but, yeah. but yeah. in the past, I'm saying in the past, right? Mm. Mm. You know, the, demented you, was referred to as crazy, right? Exactly. You're demented, yeah. You're the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's very negative. Mm. Yeah. It mm. is, yeah. Mm. 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 But, yeah, okay. for, for many of them, they are, um, by the time they, they understand what it is, they're quite comfortable to tell us that they have autism. Mm. Mm. Because by okay. itself, it explains a lot of their behaviors. Mm. Right. Okay. 
Mm, okay. mm. Yes, and some of the other myths that we mm. we haven't really touched. So we touched on are they violent? Oh no, actually we haven't really touched. Yeah, um, not yet. No, no. no. But, mm, yeah. So many people say um, children with autism or people with autism are violent. So you hear parents dragging uh, their neurotypical children away from the child mm. that is different or with autism and say, don't play with the one, later he mm. hit you. Mm. But actually it's not true. Many of them are very, very sweet. Mm. Um, mm. They hit because they are, are triggered or they are um, unable to manage the situation. They are overwhelmed with the situation, not because they're violent. Right. And it's a way of them expressing themselves as well, right? I mean, instead of come saying it, is, is, that, is that their way of expression? Because no, they no, don't no. know. So, no, it's uh, not. Okay. Anyone that does not or has not learned how to use words to articulate themselves can use their hands so you have teens that fight you have those you know that they, yeah. they have long fights riots why because yeah, yeah. they don't learn to sit and debate or speak to each yeah. other or negotiate mm. right mm. so they hit yeah, mm. yeah that is so, true you know, yeah. mm, it can happen to anyone the other one okay. that i have is children with autism are stupid Oh, this really gets me. <laughs> right. I mean, They're you mentioned the you mentioned the high IQ. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm. yeah. Most of them are geniuses. Yeah. 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 Not all. Not all. Yes. Um, but uh, we when we do the baseline uh, IQ test, we do know that many of them um, are just below average, so they can function like you and I, mm. or you know even above average IQ. So they are not stupid, so don't treat them like they are because they they can feel hurt. So that brings me to the next point, which many people think they don't feel. That's not true at mm. all. They have feelings too. Mm. 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 Are their feelings um, accentuated? So uh, yeah, that is super... Uh, a really super question because they it is um how do i say is it accentuated they feel more deeply because they uh, are more sensitive sometimes some of them are more sensitive mm. yeah so they i think i think they got it right what do you I mean? think they got it right. They're super. They're super sensitive. You know, they think our world is like so. It's like it's it's so over chaotic and all that. And it's true. You know, I mean, they, they're dealing with life, if I can say so, in a much simpler manner, right? Uh, and and more people can sit down and just try and break things down and process things like the way they do, and and make better decisions as well, right? Uh, I wanted to ask Dr. Jerry, um, are there ways to uh, train or concentrate on their assets okay. as such, you know? Um, question yeah. on, okay. on air. We're going for a traffic break okay. right now. Good morning, Singapore, and good morning, world. Welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. It is a Tuesday, and every Tuesday, we're joined by Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. And today, we're talking about... Uh, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> autistic <laughs> Spectrum Disorder. Angel, you yes, had a question yes, for Jerry. I did, yes. Um, so, Dr. Jerry, uh, I was I was wondering because um, a, there are a lot of famous people in history that live that have lived with autism. Uh, if I can just name a few people like Hans Christian Andersen, Dan Aykroyd, uh, Tim Burton, Lewis Carroll, Charles Darwin, Emily Dickinson, and the list goes on and on and on. Um, so, they have found ways or they found ways to sort of build on those talents that they have and become famous for it. Is there anything that parents or, or individuals can do to do the same so that they can really, you know, um, not become famous, but build on the, that talent and build on the plus points um, uh, of their lives? Before I say, the other famous person that is so trending now with autism is Elon Musk. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. I heard about that. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
Ah. Yeah. Um, and, but just side trip because I was like, are you going to say him? Are you going to say? And you didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say it. I was like, my yep. tongue. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, that's where the parents come in and play such an important role because all of us have preferences. And parents are very sensitive to know what their child likes, dislikes, gravitates to. You know, when they come for therapy, it's just a set. You know, um, although we, we individualize the program for them, but it's really just set programs for them and exercises for them. But when parents are able to tell us, you know, that oh, you know, he's very interested in drawing, he or you know why is he taking things apart and then putting it back together and then we start to help them to develop in that particular area you know and we look at whether they are developmentally uh, on 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 track you know and at which stage they are so that we can continue to grow them right. so it's a very lovely process it's a lovely tangle with the parents with the child and um although it appears to be like trial and error but it's not 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 exactly trial and error with the technical part, but more the preferences of the child. Mm. You know, I'm quite mm, surprised. Okay. I, I had no idea Elon Musk was uh, yeah. autistic. I think so, I think his is more Asperger's, right? He has Asperger's, doesn't he? Asperger's. So Asperger's yeah. is on the spectrum of ASD now. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 So, so you know, Jerry, I just wanna, I just wanna ask you this question, right? So, how real yes. was Rain Man, Dustin Hoffman, and 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 Tom Cruise? Was it an exaggeration? Very... I mean, do adults actually behave the way Dustin Hoffman portrayed the autistic uh, adult, or was it an exaggeration? And you know, how Dustin Hoffman was behaving in the movie was that more how a child? Uh, who, uh, who who is living with uh, um, uh, autism behaves? Um, he did a pretty good, you know, as we know, any drama, they dramatize it and they glamorize it, right? Mm -hmm. But he did mm -hmm. a pretty good uh, um, uh, character of the Rain Man, of his character. Okay. Yeah, so, so there are adults uh, who adults behave in that way? With uh, yes. autism, that is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So okay. he had the repetitive behavior. He had the very introverted behavior. Um, I thought the, the one that is very interesting uh, on Netflix would be The Good Doctor. The Good, the good Doctor. doctor where, yeah. Yeah. Mm, Dr. Mar uh, uh, Murray, is it? And so he had uh, autism. Or he has not had, you cannot grow out of autism. So that's another myth. You cannot grow out oh, of right. autism. You learn how to work around the behaviors. You learn how to work around your fears. And you learn to work with your strengths. So mm. I think that's what Angel was asking about also. Mm. Knowing your strength and then growing your strength and working with your strengths. Uh, Love it. I've got a question coming up in a moment regarding because we've been talking about how we teach people with autism to do things, how we teach. Uh, someone on our Facebook page has made a comment and I'd like to see what Jerry has to say about it. All right. Here's Boyzone right now with Love Me For A Reason on The Big Show, 1FM 91.3. Jerry, we we keep mentioning how we teach them to deal with this, and we teach them this, and we teach them that. We we've got someone on our Facebook page who says you don't really teach someone with autism; you learn with them. Mm -hmm. I like that. Wow, what a lovely way mm. to put it. Yeah, and I yes, yes, yes. You know, um, I had a five-year-old come in, or four or five. No, I saw the little kid from four. So he came in, you know, for uh, five going on six. And it was just last week. So I must share this story. He came in and he has a new watch. Okay, this little tight here comes in and he says, I've got a watch, Auntie Jerry. I was like, yeah, okay. Mine is a digital watch. It's 200 meters. It's waterproof, 200 meters. So, okay. And then, so he looks... He, I thought he didn't see me wearing my watch, right? But then he asked, mm. is your watch waterproof? And I was like, mm, no. Then he said, he thought for one second and he went, oh, 
I think it's water resistant. And I was like, yeah, yes, <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, I guess it is. I think it is. Oh, then I said, oh, um, what's the difference between water resistance and waterproof? And he goes,、mm. well, water resistant is when you go in the water for a little while, you can wash your hands and can, you know, go inside the water for a little while. Mine is two hundred meters. <laughs> I, I can take a longer. I was like, "Oh my god!、Wow. This is amazing." Amazing. Then, oh,、mm. I can imme、yeah. I can immediately、oh. tell you what watch、uh, you know he was wearing. He was wearing a Rolex <laughs> Sea Dweller. <laughs> I'm sure, Fadil. Oh my dear! And the funniest thing was he. It didn't end there. Okay. Yeah. After he finished with the the waterproof and water resistant, he went. Well, mine is digital. Can you read digital? I、oh, said digital. yes, and I was wondering where I was going. And then, then he he said, "Well, yours is analog." And I was like, "Okay, wow, yes, wow. mine is analog." And um, but I cannot read it. It's in Roman numerals. Now, mind you, he I did not see him. Looking at my watch at all, there was a distance between him and myself. But he must have caught a glimpse at some point, and he remembered all these details. And he's, it wasn't he's his first time with you.、House. Wasn't his first time、But、with you, or it was? First time he's seeing me with this watch. With that particular watch, right? Okay,、mm. I thought you might have seen it from. Yeah,、before. but it was、wow. a digital、yes. dive watch, you know, two hundred、yeah. meters down. That's, that's a dive watch. <laughs> yeah, it's a dive watch. <laughs> it could be a sunto, you know. It、He、could be. <laughs> Glenn is obsessed with、so、what kind of watch、lovely. it is. No, I I have no idea. Don't ask me about watches. I was just <laughs> fascinated when. That's why I wanted to share because after. That's He's incredible. Right. Whoever that wrote in, it's absolutely right. We learn with them.、Mm. I had to take、mm. a second glance at my watch to actually, you know, realize that it is Roman numerals. And look、yeah. at all、That's、the details,、perfect. right? I think、the、we don't look at all those、remembered. details enough.、True. Yeah. Yes. Like we can definitely yes. learn、and、from them. And it's only five. It was、my、just、goodness. so beautiful、yeah. having that conversation with him. He's quite special、yeah. because he looks and he sees.、Yeah. Most of us just、yeah. look, but we don't see.、That's、he、true. looks and he sees. See. He's,、yeah. he's no, five、yeah. years old. I'm thirty-five years old. I still don't understand watches. <laughs> Now you said you、He、said this. Can't read Roman numerals. That's right. <laughs> you said this child was five. How young can you di diagnose、yes. autism?、Mm. So the the traits、um, we can. Uh, you can bring the child in from as young as、uh, three years old or even two plus, yeah, and we can help you with, you know, the the、uh, signs and symptoms. Okay. Yeah.、Mm. Okay.、Um, I have a question.、Um, so earlier we were speaking about Asperger as well. We didn't really speak about it, but you said it's on the spectrum of autism, right? So autism、yes. is basically the umbrella of all the different、uh, disorders.、Correct. What else?、Correct. What other names are there out there in、uh, besides Aspergers, besides autism? What are the other terms that are used that we may not know? Oh, oh, I know,、Ooh. I know what watch this what? kid has already. <laughs>、oh、my He has a G Shock. <laughs> Yes, I was going to say a Casio. I was going to say a Casio. No, yeah, no, and 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 his is also water resistant to two hundred meters. There you go.、It、has to be this one.、It、has to be this one. <laughs> What color was it? Shock. There you go. For those of you watching on the Big Show TV, I got it. I got no, it. No, it doesn't look anything like that. Okay, back to the drawing board. <laughs> He's back to googling watches. <laughs> the next time, Jerry. The next time this little five-year-old boy comes in, please find out what the watch is because Glenn is going to lose sleep. Yes. Yeah. In okay, the middle wait, of the night, he'll wake up and think about watches. Exactly. Back to go, my go, go. question. Back to my question. This is more important.、Uh, what other terms are there out there that、uh, may describe someone living with autism,、okay. Aspergers, and all that? So, it is autism、uh, ASD, so mild to severe, and then there's Aspergers. There is、mm -hmm. um, pervasive disorder not otherwise specified. So there's what?、So、what? There's, there's, Yeah, you can't put into any category. So there's this category、oh. called not otherwise specified, and then there is the more severe,、um, but it's very few of them that have it. 
the uh, Rett's Rett syndrome. Rett's. R E T T apostrophe S. Rett's syndrome. Yes, yes, I've heard of that. Yeah. Mm. And uh, childhood disintegrative disorder. Okay. Oh, so it all follows so under the umbrella the of most autism. Severe, mm. Yeah. Most severe, yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Mm, okay. The wow. Most okay. Severe ones. So, so we we don't yeah. usually refer to that. You know, we look mm. at the the um, average spectrum of mild to severe. Um, I only yeah. ask because that means we're less we're we're now less ignorant of the terms that are out there because yeah. sometimes you you hear it and then you're like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, and and it's and it's just good to know these things. Mm. So so you I mentioned Asperger's just, and all that. Timing. I think Julian is waiting. No, no, no Julian no, is not today. around. Julian's not coming in today. Yeah, Julian's not oh coming in God. today. Yeah. You have the whole morning. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned Asperger's just now. We are talking about uh, the um, uh, autistic spectrum this morning. You know, just like uh, Men- um, Angel mentioned earlier on, uh, we work with Dementia Singapore, and uh, there were there there are many different types of yes. uh, of mm. of. Well, is it right to say many types of dementia? But no, for Levels. example, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Alzheimer's comes under dementia yeah. mm-hmm. as well. Dementia. And I hear there are over a thousand different um, you know, conditions mm. yeah. that come under mm. you know, dementia. Yeah. dementia. So autistic-wise, you, you mentioned um, Asperger's. Is there anything else that comes under uh, autism? <laughs> No. You know, we just went through this. Right? Just went through this. No, but I, I mentioned a thousand for for dementia. It's no. a thousand, a thousand different yeah. different types, right? Yeah. So you, are there you, a thousand different so, types here? Yeah. Are there are there like no, so, that many? So there, it's a spectrum, so it covers many different um, levels of it. Levels. And earlier we spoke of yeah, we spoke of uh, Asperger's. We Rhett's. spoke of the PD and uh, not uh, otherwise, specified. otherwise specified, and then we spoke of yeah, rats and the uh, childhood disintegrative disorder. So you have all these different types there. Now, I guess what makes can complicate it is that it can comorbid with other oh. um, learning issues. Yeah, oh, no. so it can mm. come together with um, ADHD. So oh. the behavior becomes accentuated with, you know, impulsivity. Okay, um, hold on. We're going to go for a traffic time. update. Yeah, I, more and more, I think I'm autistic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> two, three, 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 three. one, here we go. Good morning and welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Thank you so much for having us on. We hope you're enjoying today's session with our guest every Tuesday, Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. Once again, good morning, Jerry. Good morning. I think Chris has a lovely, lovely um, you know, sharing on the Facebook. Yeah, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, he says, my son is autistic. He is considered under the moderate spectrum. He does not uh, verbal a lot. He Once he had a mini down, a mild meltdown on, uh, in the train, lots of eyes staring. How to calm him down. And uh, Chris was really surprised as... Uh, a man who was leaving the train came up to him and said, God bless you and him. Aww. So beautiful. Aww, Thank sweet. you for sharing, Chris. That's, that's very nice. You, uh, you know, speaking of which, yeah, how do we, how do we, so, I'm sorry, FD, uh, no, just go one ahead, question. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, how do we behave or, you know, around people that live with uh, autism or have children of people, uh, uh, children with autism, how, how do we behave? What do we say? What do we not say? You know, um, if, if the kid is acting up? Uh, I, I, I took, I was a little bit startled there, but it was, it's only because, maybe because I, I interact with them, they're no different yeah. from many of us. So we don't okay. need to treat them any differently. You know, okay. um, we do mm. need to treat them with a little bit more tolerance because they might um, showcase uh, behaviors that we are not used to, say things that we are uncomfortable with. They can mm. be very direct. They can mm. be extremely abrupt also. But there is no malice intent. And they, mm. they, they are unable to figure out your emotions or to read the subtlety of, you know, the subtle nuances of, you know, social cues. So that's why they may be a bit more abrupt 
and you know um, uh, abrasive as Glenn was saying mm, much yeah. much much okay uh, yeah but for for so people tolerance who are, is key okay. for people who are awkward you know like what uh, Angel just brought up right some people just feel mm. awkward in a situation like that is it mm. best for them to then just keep quiet you know rather than try mm. you know to mm. to communicate or uh, you know with yeah. with the if individual you're unsure. Mm. If you're unsure, you don't need to do anything because right. um, the the little child with autism is not going to hold you to it. You don't yeah. need to hold a conversation with the child. It, yeah. They they will yeah. want to request for a conversation, and if you wish to participate in it, please do. If you don't, you can always not participate in it. You know. Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, coming up, I've got a question. Yeah. yeah, I've got a question about selective mutism. All right. Meantime, here's Journey with oh. "Don't Stop Believing" on the Big Show, One FM, ninety-one point three. Learn from Thumper. If you have nothing nice to say, don't say don't anything say, nice at all. Yeah. <laughs> Thumper the rabbit. Yeah, Thumper the yeah, rabbit. Thumper the yeah. rabbit. Yeah. Oh my God! But the, 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 this rabbit could talk. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Yeah, you want to come course, over to my yes, house and yes, see yes. my rabbits? Hey, this is Thumper <laughs> in Alice in Wonderland, right? Was it? No, I think Thumper no. is Thumper on its own. Oh, Thumper yeah. is a whole different cartoon. Right. So Jerry, that's not the Mad Hatter. <laughs> no, Jerry Grace uh, gave us this message on Facebook. She says, "Good morning, everyone. Can I check if selective mutism is on the spectrum, or is it just rebellious behavior that goes away as a tween grows older? Because play therapy doesn't seem to help. Is selective mutism uh, a mutism part?" Is it on the spectrum for what is, autism? What is selective it mutism? Is a, it okay. is a diagnosis by itself. And selective okay. mutism is extremely difficult to deal with. You know, sometimes we have breakthroughs. Other times we do need a long period of time to um, work with the child or with the teen because they are not even able to tell us what the trigger is. So they would just keep quiet with, even with their, their therapist, but they may be able to talk with the family. They go to school and they can't talk at all. Uh, or mm. different scenarios, they would not talk at all. So we do try. Um, and, and, you know, please give your therapist time to work with your child. If not, you know, uh, perhaps, you know, other forms of therapy might help also. Okay. Okay. Mm. Very okay. okay. I'd never heard of selective mm. mutism before. Yeah. So, so, so it's when, when they it's don't talk, right? It's when they refuse we to talk. We did cover it, I think. Yeah. So they, they, yeah. Oh, well, we can always But you know, like, Jerry, week. sometimes sometimes when you're talking, it goes in here, comes out the other side. Uh, that's that's for, selective for hearing. That's, for, that's, for that's selective no, hearing. You know why, Jerry? Because he wears his headphones this way. So it goes in one, <laughs> one is it comes see I with me it stays so it's both sides. Is it I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't want to hold on to one side and look like the Bee Gees. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and no, maybe a mobile radio DJ as well. Because I'm not a mobile radio DJ. I'm a radio DJ. <laughs> there's, there's a difference. Jerry, okay. you know you know when 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 autistic children oh I don't know whether it's again correct me if I'm if I'm using the wrong language no, when it's when an a, open discussion when a, when an okay. autistic child acts up how how do we calm that child down mm. so when you approach the child yours you as the the person going in needs to be calm also because they're very sensitive right mm. so they can feel if you're all activated if you're mm. flustered mm. and if you are flustered they get more activated so you really don't want that oh. you know mm. um yeah so approaching them very gently and calmly using very cal uh, very soft tones to mm. help mm. them to de-escalate the whole situation this is the way Just we treat our wives by the way <laughs> yeah this is for <laughs> anyone isn't it you have to be calm with everyone right yeah. i mean when someone's overreacting or or something like for regular human uh, people i'm talking about you go in calm because if you go in calm then their level sort of comes down as well right, That's how you talk yeah. to, um, right. but yeah. the reason that i is... asked the reason why i asked this question is molly said there's a there's a there's a system where you place your hands on the shoulder on their shoulders with a with a firm grip but not too tight to help calm mm. them down is that is that a way of to doing wait. it wait 
as a weight. Right? Well, it really depends on each child. Like uh, you know, like I said, right? Some of the children are very sensitive. They don't to want you to touch them,、mm. especially if you're agitated. Especially if you're angry. You and I, if we are angry, sometimes we don't want to be touched. Also,、oh、so、like、the next reaction. <laughs> <laughs> the natural reaction is you kind of you know push them away and、yeah. just you know uh, uh, or you or the child will push you. Oh no, Glenn is resonating with it. You got pushed a lot. Yeah, no, he is. It sounds exactly like some of his past relationships. I think he's like they're pushing me away.、Oh, and you won't let me touch、really? them. <laughs>、mm. In the Avengers,、uh, Natasha Romanoff uses a、uh, lullaby. With 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 lullaby, 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 Okay, just Glenn, took my palm. I think we should stop, Glenn. <laughs> Glenn is Glenn is like veering off. <laughs> it's, it's almost nine o'clock. That's why he feels it, this way. Yeah,、stroke、his his attention span only lasts fifty five minutes. See, he's、yeah. he's he's going off already. One of these days, we're gonna do the、it's、attention、like. test for Glenn La. <laughs> Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think、wow. we will、so、all、brilliant. fail. All of us will、we'll、fail. I've, I've been so attentive for fifty-six <laughs> minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's all. Actually, actually, it, actually, you know, we've got one、Any、more comment. <laughs> we've got、yeah. one more comment on our Facebook page that that is、mm. quite interesting.、Uh, me and my wife know a parent whose kid might have autism. We're not sure if the parent knows, or maybe they're trying to ignore it.、Mm. What、oh, wow. should、mm. we do? Should we tell them? If yes, how do you tell them? Yeah. Should they、mm. mind their own business? Yeah. Should they mind their <laughs> own is, business? It is、wow. very difficult, but you know, sometimes、mm. in a group of children,、um, you can see the disparity in the behavior already.、Uh, the you can gently, you know, just let them know that hey. Your child is showing certain behaviors, you know.、Um, go to your pediatrician because sometimes to tell them to go straight to the psychologist or the psychiatrist might be a bit too much for them.、Mm. Uh, but I hope not. As you all can see, psychologists are very friendly.、Mm, true. <laughs> yes. You know, Jer- Jerry. What? But, are,、um, yeah.、Mm. I just want to ask you, like, what are the chances that a kid is,、um, you know, autistic if parents cannot control their kid anymore? I, as in, like, really, like, like they have no control over their kid anymore. Is it possible that the kid is autistic, or is it that the parents are just weak? <laughs> no, that, like, seriously, that's a good question, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm just being know, honest here. No, that's a good question. Yes, yes, but it doesn't mean. That if a child is autistic, the parent have no control. So、mm. that's that's also a myth. So if the parent doesn't have control, there might be a few more things at play. And Glenn, you probably hit the nail on the head. Like sometimes the parents have no control.、Um, they are too lax, and because they have no boundaries, the the child have crossed many boundaries, and you cannot pull back anymore.、Mm. Um, the、mm. child have other. Issues, anger management,、um, ADHD, other issues that、um, may have not been diagnosed and can easily be missed.、Uh, you probably or or even、um, a conduct disorder. Yeah. Right. Because the, the kid they, could be could be hitting、uh, grandma, could be hitting yeah, grandpa, yeah, staying in the、yes. same household, hitting the、yes. maid, um, um, abusing、yeah. the 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 the、uh, the pets.、Mm, you know.、Mm, right. Yeah. Yes.、Mm. Yeah. Yes. So、mm. it could be conduct disorder also that may be you know、um, uh, undiagnosed. So、mm. we would really encourage the parent to bring the child to the the psychologist. Or if you're very very uncomfortable, go to the pediatrician first. Your pediatrician is the first person and is the one that has been looking out for your child all these years. They mm, will direct、yeah. you, and we've worked with brilliant, you know, pediatricians who will, at the appropriate time, encourage the parents to come to us. Right.、Mm. Okay. Okay. Okay.、Mm. Any final words,、uh, Dr. Jerry? Of course, the <laughs> Maori word for、um, autism is takiwatanga, in his or her 
own time and space. How beautiful it is. That is beautiful. Maori is, word, did you say? Maori. 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 Maori word. Yes. Taki ta, taki. Takiwa tanga. Takiwa tanga. Takiwa tanga. Nice, I like it. Yes. Akuna matata. In his or her own time and space. And in Love his or her own time and space, they will grow. And just to end it, I always remember um, the mother who, after two or three years of therapy, you know, held my hand and say, my child is finally able to say, I love you, mommy. Oh, oh wow. Oh, oh, oh I was wow. so sure that. Awesome. Great ending, yeah. great ending, Dr. Jerry. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Mm. And, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're thinking of all you parents, you yeah. know, who um, who who go uh, through, you know, the day uh, taking taking yeah. extra care of 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 your children, you know, who who may have uh, you know autism, you know, we, yeah. we just we just like to to, to say, uh, you know, be strong, you know, our thoughts are with all of you, and everything is going to be okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so Very much, lovely. Jerry. All right. Awesome. Thank you. We'll see, see you next week. I'll see all of you next week. Thank you for Bye. having me on again. Always a Bye. pleasure. Bye-bye.